What will 2024 have in store for Miles Seward is sent to the group fans? What can or may we have happening throughout the year? Do you have any expectations? Anyone you'd love to make a solo debut or just release new music because it's been a while since they last did? Well, this is the episode in which you and I dive into a couple of expectations for male CEO artists and to the groups for 2024 and check if any of my predictions for 2023 actually came true or not. Let's kick off this episode of Say You Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to Seo Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is 5 expectations for male Seo artists and 2D music projects in 2024. We're already well into 2024, but it is time to talk a bit about what I expect to change this year, which will be the big comebacks or new releases or which 2D music projects will jump popularity-wise, for example. Please pay attention that from this point on, everything I will be saying in this episode, unless it is previously released singles or albums, are just predictions or expectations of mine. None of those are confirmed, nor do I have sources indicating that any of those things will happen. Let's start talking about my 5 expectations in 2023 and did I get anything right? Well, the number one expectation was the solo debuts. Arthur Lounsbury, Yuya Hirose, Shun Horie and Shoya Chiba. Only Shoya Chiba announced the solo debut, finally, to take place in January 2024 with this first EP, Blessing. At the same time, Arthur Lounsbury may have not made a solo debut, but he is now the frontman of an indie rock band named Stelegram. While it's not a solo debut, at least fans can listen to Lounsbury outside of 2D music projects and actually get a taste of what he likes to perform as well as how unique his voice color and singing tone are. Still, I'd say I only got one out of four right. But hey, it's much better than last year, and uh, now that Shuichiba made the solo debut, and quite possibly I won't stop talking about it in the next couple of months, I will start championing Yuyu Hirose's solo debut like there is no tomorrow. Uh, I still want Shun Horie to take a step towards becoming a solo artist, but somehow I don't see that happening any sooner. The second prediction was the album releases. Oh boy, now this category was a wild horse for me. <laughs> Some of the CEO I expected would come back didn't and started to create a pattern between music releases and live shows. Others went completely off the grid for basically a strange reason, while others that I hadn't predicted released and new music, um, much to my satisfaction, they did, but for completely outside of my bets. So let's see. First albums by Kotaro Nishiyama, Gakuto Kajiwara and Jin Ogasawara. Well, this is a sad story. Nishiyama was nowhere to be found in 2023. Kajiwara released a new mini-album and Jin Ogasawara released the first album, but also announced a hiatus from his solo activities, which, well, doesn't bode well for a future return. Still, I got two out of three right. Then I predicted full-length albums by Shotaoi, Toshiki Toyanaga, Soma Saito, Yumo Uchida, Makoto Furukawa and Toshiki Masuda. Well, Shotaoi released Detonator, Toshiki Toyanaga released Character Answer, and Yumuchida released Y. Makoto Furukawa released the single, Place Your Bets, which doesn't count for this category. And Soma Saito and Toshiki Masuda were completely off the grid in 2023. So I got 3 out of 6 right. The third prediction was the 2D music projects embracing different music genres. Well, we didn't get that at all in 2023. Actually, 2023 was one of the weakest years in terms of new 2D music projects being launched, and I'm not even going to start talking about new 2D music projects exploring different music genres. So, the most innovative we got was Executioner, and even so, Visual K Rock seems to be on the rise in recent years, so I wouldn't call it necessarily um, something different. So I got 0 out of 1. 
The fourth prediction was more CU artists making their live shows available as live streams. I didn't get this right and in a way it's, it worries me. Male CU artists stopped making their live shows live streamed to international fans. Soma Saito didn't do that, and Yumuchida also didn't do that, Sir Vanity, Gran Rodeo and many other names also didn't make those live shows available. In the opposite direction were the 2D music projects, with many making sure parts of their live shows or their entire live shows were available for live streaming to international fans. Hanadol, From Margonavis, Hypnosis Mike, Sidem and Paradox Live are among some of the projects that took a step forward towards including international fans in their plans. Of course, Hanadol and From Margonavis have been doing that since the start, However, Sidem and Paradox Live were certainly new to this thing. It seems that for solo artists, international fans are not even taken into account, whereas, on the other hand, for some 2D music projects, international fans have started to play an important role. So I got none out of one. And the fifth and last prediction I had for last year was that more say you would basically make a jump into live acting. Also surprising, but in 2023, it seems that Mail Sayu were not as keen to appear on TV dramas and live action series as in previous years. Or perhaps the industry is no longer interested in bringing Sayu on board for their first experiences as live actors. I honestly don't know what happened here, but after 2022, in which it seemed that all male Seiyu were trying out to become live actors, in 2023 it was the opposite. So I got also none out of one. So all points counted and I got 6 points out of a possible 16. When I say that 2023 was unpredictable, I mean it. Still, it's good to see some things, especially Shuechiba's solo debut, finally happening. Let me know in the comments if any of your predictions for 2023 actually became true. Now it's time to ask the question, what are my 5 expectations for 2024? I'm going to be bold on these ones, because if these actually come true in 2024, then the year will be absolutely amazing for fans of Male Seiyuu artists and to the music projects. Prediction number one, solo debuts by Yuya Hirose and Shun Horie. Yes, I'm back to try to manifest solo debuts for Yuya Hirose, long overdue, and Shun Horie, which is fully deserved. They have proven, time and time again, that they are more than ready for that step, usually being and showcasing they are the most skilled singers within the 2D music projects they are a part of, or even the 2D groups they are a part of, and in Horia's case, he is easily the best singer within Spark Lu, having shown in Ao Shigure, a solo song in Daybreak, what it would be like if he got the chance to become a solo artist. So yeah, I am betting hard on Yuya Hirose and Shun Horie. Horie may be a difficult bet to become true, but still I would love for that day to come. But I will also add Chiaki Kobayashi and Takeo Otsuka to the mix as my wild cards, and why is that? Both have, in the space of one year, turned into some of the most buzzworthy names among the new generation of male Sayu, and have the singing skills to warrant solo debuts should they want to. I'd be more inclined to have a Takeo Otsuka solo debut because he has actually shown a lot of his singing skills in the most varied 2D music projects and is actually the voice and face of the Fabulous Night Mixed Media project doing an amazing job as Gilgamesh. Otsuka has said before that he loves to sing and has the chops for that, so why not? I'd love for you these wildcard bet of mine to come true, and we'd have a sweet baritone joining the list of solo artists among Miles Sayu. And why do I also mention Chiaki Kobayashi? Given the buzz he has all over him, and the singing skills that he has been showing, why not? He does have the talent, and now the popularity to warrant a solo debut, However, I feel like these basically he's making a solo debut would actually end up being rushed when he still has a lot to prove. Still, from what I see of his performances with Kramv and the potential he shows, he could be an interesting solo debut should he ever want to do so. Prediction number two. New full-length albums by Soma Saito, Makoto Furukawa, Toshiki Masuda 
and Jairawaxia. As I mentioned earlier, 2023 was to become a massive year for fans of male Sayu artists and 2D music projects. Well, it ended up being lukewarm. The big hitters were away. I'm talking about Soma Saito and Toshiki Masuda, who are currently the best-selling male Sayu artists sales per CD, not cumulative. And Makoto Furukawa and Jairo Axia were flirting with the idea of releasing a full album, but instead ended up releasing singles. So, with that being said, I'm betting Soma Saito's silence in 2023 was to prepare not an EP, but a full-length album, potentially, to be released around April and June. Is this going to be that double album that Soma Saito was talking about it was his dream to create? Well, I don't know, but honestly, by now I want something, anything new from Saito. Uh, that goes way beyond the official fan club song that he announced he was working on in December 2023. Makoto Furukawa's first live show and fifth anniversary single seemed to me like the end of a chapter in his solo career. And as such, to open a new chapter, I feel like a full-length album would make sense. Could we get a second full-length album from Makoto Furukawa in 2024? It is highly likely. Toshiki Masuda has been a blur when it comes to predicting his activity as a solo artist. He goes on long periods of hiatus between CDs, especially when he is riding on a lot of momentum, which doesn't make any sense. But regardless, whenever he appears, he always sells more than 10,000 CDs. This keeps on being one of those things I can't explain, but then again Masuda is quite mysterious himself, despite what it may seem of his public image, so it goes with the image. So with two years of silence between CDs, it is time to summon Toshiki Masuda to the spotlight. He may arrive out of nowhere with a new EP or full-length album. Here's to hoping he releases new music soon. And to wrap up this section is Jarawaxia. The band is back to releasing music with Bushiroad Music after a weird deal with Universal Music Japan gone wrong. I speak for myself when I say that Jarawaxia has been doing amazing work as of late and I honestly feel like fans deserve a second EP or a new full-length album. I hope the band goes back to the studio to craft something amazing for us all. Third expectation, Tsuki Pro ends up making their music available on streaming platforms for international fans. One of the biggest misses when it comes to reaching a wider audience comes from Tsuki Pro. The franchise is still going strong into its ninth anniversary, which is impressive as most 2D music projects tend to fade away after their seventh anniversary. And more and more people are curious about the music by Sawada, Solid's Growth and Quell. While the music by Tsuki Pro's groups is available on streaming platforms such as Spotify in Japan, that hasn't been extended to international fans, especially those in Europe, the Americas and Africa. I feel like, uh, following in the footsteps from the Saidem and Utapri franchises, Tsuki Pro bringing their music to the West would be amazing news. Also, I could finally add the songs by these groups to all the playlists I've shared with you all. Here's to hoping this happens. Fourth prediction or expectation, the first full-length albums by Lolodi, Kentito, Sir Vanity and Takuya Eguchi. Lolodi has yet to release a first album, even if it is a compilation, I would love for that to happen. I don't know if the Hanadol franchise is waiting to hold a live show for the talented lyrical pop trio, or if they are waiting for the Hanadol anime to get a premiere date, but the thing is that fans could get by now a first album by this amazing group, easily one of the best to grace the 2D music industry. Kentito has been releasing digital singles, which I believe will lead up to the release either of a second EP or a first album, so I'm betting on a first album. Sir Vanity is such an unpredictable band that I honestly am betting against myself whenever I mention them. But still, after their amazing display in Midnight Sun, I feel like the band is more than ready to release a fresh first album with new music for fans to explore. 
and Takuya Gucci is on the road to releasing his first album, I'm sure, especially given the CDs he's released so far, and how Kiramune works with solo artists. So if he releases the first album, I believe it will only arrive in the second half of 2024, or close to it, as the second half of the year tends to be less crowded, giving way for more possibilities to chart higher on Oricon or at least sell more copies of the CD. And the fifth prediction. New Trigger One Man Live Show paired up with the third album release. So from what has been done by the Idolish 7 franchise in the past couple of years, it seems that the way forward is for all groups to always have their solo live shows now that they have a robust repertoire of songs to their name. Seeing as Trigger was the first group to actually hold a live show or a solo live show and all groups have already done theirs, it's time to restart the count and have the talented trio come forward for another one-man live show, potentially paired up with the release of a third album. Yes, I'm betting on two things here, because honestly, Trigger already has plenty of digital singles to their name that will complete the tracklist of a potential new album. Whether it will be a concept one like Variant or something with more of a compilation vibe like Regality, I honestly don't care much. <laughs> A new album by Trigger, with new songs and more of their outstanding singing, is actually what I'm looking forward to. If it is a concept album, for sure I'll be over it like crazy, but it's Trigger, so that is already given for me. And a new live show and a new album, that's bold, but I believe Trigger can pull off. After all, they are one of the boldest yet classiest groups out there. They do have the gal to do that. And a bonus prediction, Dear Vocalist and Carnelian Blood return. As you may have noticed, in 2023, Dear Vocalist and Carnelian Blood went under the radar completely. This has never happened since the franchise is launched, and for some fans it was worrying. At least I speak for myself when I worried that another 2D music project I love could have been shelved. Thankfully, Daisuke Iwasaki, Reject's CEO and creative lead, talked about all the projects that were quiet last year and mentioned that they would resume in due time. Their vocalist already teased the new CD series, yet Carnelian Blood is still in complete silence. Here's to hoping we get a new full-fledged CD series by both rock franchises. Honestly, 2023 was quite boring without them around. And that's all for my predictions. These are quite bold, but still not as focused on innovation as in the previous years. And that is because the CU and 2D music industry seem to not be focused on that at all. Instead, the focus has been on improving and on having 2D groups perform or regularly releasing music as if they were real 3D groups or bands. This is not a bad focus, but it steals away the opportunities that the 2D music industry, for example, could have to improve, expanding its reach with international fans. As far as my predictions and expectations go, I hope all come true, but I am quite aware that some of those are wishful thinking. I'd love to know what you would like to see change in the music industry for 2D music projects, or so you artists, or even which 2D music projects you believe will, for example, be really popular this year. So now tell me, what are your expectations for 2024? Do you have a male say you, you want to see making a solo debut, for example? Do you expect any changes in the CU industry? Let me know in the comments on YouTube and Spotify. And remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Sayu Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly Miles Sayu and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. And if you are listening to this episode on a podcast listening platform, please consider following the podcast and leaving a review. Leaving a review is really simple and helps other people find the podcast and fall in love with my LCU artists and to the groups. I'll return next week with another episode of Sayu Lounge. 
Thank you for listening and see you guys around.